new beautiful artificial floating and man-made islands came into existence and It's really amazing to see how people are so creative nowadays. Imagine from waste plastic bubbles, reeds, or some other kinds of recycled materials, new beautiful artificial floating and man-made islands came into existence and became one of the best scenic attractions in the world. Hi, good day to everyone, Richard Aguilar here and welcome back to my channel. And today, let's look into one of the most beautiful man-made artificial floating islands that may be unknown to you. And the first one I have in here is the Floating Spiral Man-Made Island, made from plastic bottles. This first artificial floating island is located in a lagoon near Puerto Aventuras on the Caribbean coast of Mexico. This island might sound like an ordinary island to you, but think again. So the whole surface of the island is made from recycled material. This artificial island is actually a man-made island made completely from 100,000 plastic bottles and other recycled materials. It's got about 150,000 plastic bottles underneath it. A British environmentalist by the name Richard Sowa is the one responsible for the creation of this. With passion and dedication, Sowa was able to gather all 100,000 empty plastic bottles necessary to build his own one-of-a-kind floating island masterpiece. Richard Sowa started building this artificial floating island in late 2007. And how he did this is by filling nets with waste plastic bottles to support a structure of plywood that he himself covered with a lot of sand in order for it to support trees and his own built house to become livable. This is really amazing. And now let me show you a glimpse of how he did it. It's got about 150,000 plastic bottles underneath it. So it's kind of solid, a little bit squidgy places. It's a nice flexible floating surface like a big raft. Then a house on top of that as well and trees are growing. Works great. Everything on the island structures that made it visible and floating on the surface of the water is made completely out of recycled materials. And most of the recycled materials being used in here to make the island floating are the empty plastic bottles. It's totally unbelievable, right? Then watch this. So the whole surface of the island is made from recycled materials. Like the old pallets here. I get a bag of bottles and I just tie them on and just cover that. Turn it over onto the water, make another one and tie the pallets together. And then I cover it with sand. And then I plant. So all of this started from tiny little mangroves. So the roots of the mangroves go through here and weave through it all and make the island completely stronger. And for you to understand better, let's be more technical in here. You know, the nature is involved in here, like the roots of the mangrove trees he planted on this island, which holds together all the plastic bottles inside the nets underneath the island. And that's the reason why it keeps on floating intact. Let me show you this. Underneath the island, Richard has plastic bottles with air trapped inside them inside nets. The nets sit underneath wooden pallets. On top of those wooden pallets are old plywood covered in sand, and into that he plants mangrove trees. Mangrove trees provide the perfect glue to hold this island together. They really like the salty nature of the ocean. The roots are also aerial, which means that they can loop around under the water and then come back above ground. So is this a built to last island? I'm pretty sure that Soa has his own responsibility to do and maintain to make this island last long. Watch. Is this floating lasagna built to last? One of the problems with using water bottles is that they degrade in the sun from the UV. So Richard has been really smart about putting his water bottles and sacks underneath the island so none of the sunlight can hit it. So the nature is actually preserving the trash and without the trash, all of the trees on this island would just die and sink into the salt water. And also without all this 100,000 empty plastic bottles, his island will totally sink underwater. 
And now here comes my number two, the Freedom Cove. This is another man-made floating island built and constructed by Wayne Adams and Catherine King. I said, uh, we're living out on the ocean. And my dad said, what do you mean you're living on the ocean? <laughs> it's a multicolored floating island and they call it the Freedom Cove. So how free are we once we live in this place? Let me first show you this. Welcome to Freedom Cove, a multicolored floating refuge. Way past the end of any road, tucked away in rugged Clockwit Sound off the west coast of British Columbia's Vancouver Island. It all sits atop about a dozen interlocking steel docks that Wayne salvaged from an old fish farm. In fact, everything here is fashioned from reclaimed material, a habitat designed from what's available when it's available. They have nowhere else to go, but being afloat in the water is already their way of living. Because their home ebbs and flows with the tide too. This couple is really dedicated to being afloat in the water for their entire life. What do you say to people who think this is a little odd or a little strange? Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, truly. Nice to be recognized for who I am. They've lived this water world lifestyle for the last 25 years building and rebuilding. They are really not fed up with this thing of building and rebuilding their island for so many years now and counting. So how then have they been able to survive with this kind of life? Let me now show you then their way of subsistence. Mostly this is a subsistence lifestyle. Nothing like fresh potatoes from the garden. Yeah, we had a lot last year. They grow almost everything they eat on their floating farm. It's Catherine's charge, mostly. She tends the garden come rain or shine. Gardening is my passion. But it's more than just a passion, though. You have to do this. This is how you live. A passion and a necessity. So that's how they live on and survive. And aside from that, Wayne Adams has enough time to go fishing. Of course, their bodies need protein because vegetables and carbohydrate foods are not enough to live. And right now, let me show you my number three, the man-made movable floating islands. The island I'm going to show you right now is a man-made movable floating island you can find in Lake Titicaca in Peru. Lake Titicaca is home to movable floating islands that were created by humans and where over 500 people still reside today. Let's take a closer look at this island together with the people living in there. Each one of these floating islands um, is an extended family. In the case of this one, Six families live on the island, and because they live on a floating island, they pay no tax. They called this paying taxes. Everyone paid what they could afford. The poor people paid a little, the people in the middle paid a middling amount, and the rich people, 1% of everyone, paid more than the others. As in income tax. Quite a few of them have day jobs in the city of Puno or elsewhere, but they're trying quite hard through tourism to be able to protect their culture. If you want to live a life without income tax, you better live in this island. But you must be nice to tourists, since that's their way of protecting their culture and probably their main source of income. And now, let me show you the main material they use in building and maintaining this island to keep it afloat and movable. They use dried reeds that grow along the banks of the lake and shape them into floating platforms and boats. These platforms can be moved from the mainland if required, which was originally a defense strategy to escape danger. The reeds are interwoven densely to be about 80 inches thick. Large logs are attached through the reeds and anchored to the river floor. Over time, the reeds tend to rot, and so they are replaced four times each year. This means to say if you want to live in this island, you will become one of those people with the responsibility of maintaining and keeping this island afloat with reeds by replacing the old reeds with new ones four times a year or else the island will sink. So right now, let me ask you this. Which of these islands do you want to live? Don't forget to leave your comment down below for me to know your opinion about this video. That's all for now. Once again, this is Richard Aguilar. Thanks for watching and see you next time.